Hi guys, it's Luke from your 50 Shades of Sales podcast. Before each episode, we just wanted to warn our listeners that there may be some swear words or choice language used in any one of our episodes. It's not intentional, we don't mean it to offend, but we wanted to forewarn each of our listeners. Please do enjoy. Hello, hello, welcome to another episode of our 50 Shades of Sales podcast series. For those of you who don't know, this is where we'll be giving you a no-holds-barred, an alternative view of the challenging yet rewarding life of a sales development representative. And for those of you who do know, welcome back to another episode. Now, in this episode, we're going to be discussing being a woman in sales, right? Now, it would be a big mistake of me to talk about being a woman in sales without having a woman on. Uh, and I've actually got two of them joining me today as well. We're going to be discussing the preconceptions, the challenges that come with it, but ultimately the rewards that are available to all women thinking about making the move into the world of sales and just how effective women can be within the world of sales as well. So joining me to do so um, is actually my first podcast guest outside of our organization. So we have Molly McManamum, who joined the startup company E4 Enable as an SDR around five months ago, um, after being in hospitality management for around three years. Now, I actually only met Molly three days ago through the power of LinkedIn, uh, after she was looking um, to the lack of female rep- uh, representation on sales podcasts. Um, and one conversation later, I thought, well, what better way to solve that than actually to invite her onto ours? Um, and I also have my colleague, Laura Quinn, uh, who leads one of our demand generation teams here at Durham Lane. And now, as well as delivering some of our biggest contracts, um, she's also very recently been nominated for a GSA Rising Star Award um, and has managed to achieve all of this in just under two years. Um, how are you both today? Very good. Thank you. Yeah, really good. Thanks. Fantastic. Now, I figured the best thing to do is just get straight into it, right? Because you only have to mention the word sales, right? And everyone pictures a pushy car salesman wearing a suit that nobody likes, right? The problem is, is they picture a man. And even the term salesman is overly used in pretty much everything that we ever say or do. Now, if you look at even the famous sales films, right, that have been made over the years, you've got Glenn Glary, Glenn Ross, the, the Boiler Room, Wolf of Wall Street, the cast is littered with alpha males in slick suits, beating their chests, fighting it out on the sales floor and in the boardroom with zero female representation right throughout any of those, right? Now, self-admittedly, the demographic uh, demographic of this particular podcast uh, in terms of its guest has been pretty one-dimensional as well. So I was just really keen to to get to the bottom of maybe why that is. um, And really, if there's any answers going forward as to how we can increase the number of women uh, within sales roles going forward. Now, a question to, um, well, I say Molly first. What, what have you noticed about the industry's lack of representation, particularly for women? And how do you think we go about changing that? Yeah, well, I've obviously only really just started my sales career for the last six months. So um, the first thing I noticed was the engagement on LinkedIn. The majority of posts that I put out there, 95% of the engagement is men every time. Um, and that's the same when you're prospecting as well. The, the, the people that I am trying to talk with, primarily men. And I just thought, my boss is a woman uh, and she's one of the only women that is a sales leader that I know of anyway. I know that I'm quite premature um, yeah. to my research, but um, yeah, it was really just my own inquisition really to, as to why that is. Um, and the only way I can think to really change that is when I was when I came into this this role, I didn't realize that social selling was a thing. I didn't know that people sold on LinkedIn. But it was completely oblivious to me. And now that I'm in the role, it's like, why why are more women not doing this? This is fun. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So I just think putting yourselves out there, like women need to speak up more. We need to get more involved on, in social selling on all the socials. And um, yeah, that's all I can really say on the matter because obviously I've, um, yeah. I'm quite new. How, how effective do you find LinkedIn then for your particular role? Great. Oh, I live on it now. Yeah. Absolutely. It's fabulous. Okay. Uh, and what about yourself, Laura? Yeah, I'm the same as, as Molly. I think it's, it's really obvious how few women there are in sales. Um, if you just look at our office, Luke, that there's, there's very few girls um, in, in the job that, that I'm in. Um, and then when I look it out into the, the clients that I work with, um, that all of the sales pr- salespeople pretty much that I work for or with are men. Um, and the, the GSA awards 
thing that you that you just mentioned before mm -hmm. had a panel of judges that I was presenting to all men <laughs> um, so it is it is really really obvious that that there is just so few females in this type of role um, and ag again I agree with Molly and that we just have to maybe just talk about it more something like this like this podcast is is perfect for doing that it's just mm -hmm. to highlight it and to to I suppose give give women who maybe are potentially thinking about it the chance to to hear someone who is in the role talk about their experiences and there is so many good experiences it's not like it's a bad thing being a woman in sales um so yeah I think these kind of podcasts being really active on LinkedIn and, and talking about it is is really the only way we can change it yeah I suppose if you look across commercial departments from a sales and marketing perspective would you say that the majority of roles in marketing are filled by females and then a women and then the majority of the sales roles are, are filled filled by males exactly and i think that's the same with with loads of different things like hrs usually women um but yeah you're right that our marketing team is predominantly girls but then our sales team is predominantly men and yeah i think it's 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 strange it's just what you what you see as normal and then that's where you you use you tend to to kind of go towards where the women are mm -hmm. when actually it, it should just be whatever you you want to do or what you're good at yeah, and it's weird as well because you cast you cast type people all the time, right? And I, I often used to remember when I was prospecting and, and I'm trying to get through to an organisation, and the gatekeeper that would pick up was male, <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and, it, and, it, and it, to it totally threw me. Um, I, I, you know, it was it was one of those things that I was completely surprised by, and when you shouldn't be really. Um, it's just that preconception I think that Definitely. a lot of people have. Now I've just been looking at some stats as well, and there was a particular Gartner report uh, that I that I read through, um, and from ongoing research, what they're saying really is a diverse sales team with a higher mix of women, right, within it is actually good for business. And the reasons actually couldn't be more evident. So companies with higher levels of gender diversity in their sales force significantly uh, outperformed uh, on their revenue goals uh, over those sales teams that did not have high number of women within their ranks. So it's clear really that for me, gender diversity stabilizes your workforce as well, um, because I, I think it, it has to hold itself accountable. Um, the same report revealed that women typically remain in their roles actually for about a year or more longer than their male counterparts. So that even then for an organization or even a sales department looking in terms of attrition costs, perhaps more importantly, stability in your sales ranks, that for me probably also impacts the overall customer experience of being dealing with a consistent person. Um, and, you know, we say that most salespeople, um, they, they leave their role, you know, they're, they're there for about 12 to 18 months a lot of the time. Um, but I think, are, are, we, are, we aiming for, are we aiming for women in sales? Are we, are we trying to recruit women in sales? I mean, what attributes do you think um, you, you need to be able to work in sales, particularly as a woman or, you know, or, or even not for that matter? Um, what attributes do you think that you need to be, to be successful within sales? Certainly now, well, let's say in five years time, Laura. Um, it's funny, I think when you, when you think of a salesperson, you think of someone getting the phone slammed down on them, the door shut on them, being told to F off. And, and you always think of like that resilient person being able to handle that being a male. Because mm -hmm. um, I, I do think that resilience is, is absolutely key in, in this kind of job. You do get a lot of rejection um, and you do get people, people saying not very nice things down the phone sometimes. That's true. Um, but I, women are just as resilient as men, and, and I think it's it's it would it would be ridiculous to say that a woman couldn't handle that kind of rejection and, and bounce back and, and do a better job because of it. Um, so yeah, I think I think resilience is definitely one of persistence. Uh, I know we always talk about professional persistence at Durham Lane, and I think that's that's a huge thing as well. Um, and then if we're talking if we're talking five years down the line, I think things uh, the fundamentals will, will stay the same, but I think. Things are definitely changing and, and to be really kind of tech savvy and creative and thinking outside the box um, and just just doing things a little bit differently. Um, and I think that's where, where you mentioned the, the mix of men and women. I think it's, it's absolutely key to have people who think differently um, to each other and to other companies, your competitors. Um, so being able to kind of use ideas from different people from the way that men think and the way that women think and kind of combining them just to to really be be different and to stand out from from your competitors mm -hmm. and what, what about yourself molly yeah i think there's um 
there's definitely now for for people like for women like us there is a massive gap in the market as such for us to make something of ourselves for us to kind of prove all those all those people wrong that may think that sales is is like that and really harsh when it's not i think there's a massive misconception that sales is it's hard faced and you do get a lot of slamming doors and and all that jazz but it's really not like the more human you are the more nurturing you are and um, the more like time you put in and care with your prospects like the more you see those results and when you see those results and um, that's like the feeling that we should be promoting in sales because mm -hmm. I, I i having experienced that it's like no other feeling and i don't think people understand that yeah so yeah you made a good point there you know we, we need to change our theme do you think the messaging needs to change as well because as a profession, really, still, I think sales still has a bit of an image problem. Um, somewhere buried deep in that collective psyche is the bias that anyone who sells is no more than a sneezy, slick oil salesman out to take your money, right? <laughs> so, without realizing it, uh, probably loads of companies are inadvertently reinforcing this bias in the way that they talk about the sales roles at the company. So if you, you, know, you put these job descriptions out there, why don't you drop the warrior language when describing a sales role? Things like it's an aggressive market. Yeah, we're looking for a hunter. Um, you're looking for a, a target crusher, a killer, because these type of things just, yeah, they, they create an impression that selling is a cutthroat business. The aggressive hunter killer mentality often seen and rewarded in many sales organizations. I don't know about you guys, but th does that hold any appeal for you as women? No, and I don't think it would for, for men really either. Well, you'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, if you, know, if you were to ask, if you were to ask um, a particular male, I guarantee if they're in any sales role, you know how you've got, the, you've got the hunter or you've got the farmer, right? So you've got the hunter who's out there getting new business and is seen to be turning over every single stone and is out there getting into new markets and you know, breaking strides. You know, they, they just want to be seen as the, the, the person who makes the difference. Whereas you've got, um, you know, are you more of a farmer? Are you more of an account manager? Are, you know, do you care? Do you build relationships? Do you look after your customers? I guarantee that nine, nine out of 10 of those people that you would ask, particularly male, would say, yeah, I'm a hunter. Mm. Yeah, maybe. Right, and, and, and I, I just think, I think the messaging does need to change because sales is not what it used to be. I remember somebody saying to me, Luke, it, it's great to have somebody who's actually selling day to day as it stands, not just some sales trainer who's talking about how great it was to sell back in the 90s, right? Mm -hmm. Um, because it's not the same industry that it used to be. Um, and, you know, we talk about these preconceptions and challenges and things like that. Have you guys ever come over any, any, any prejudice or, you know, what challenges, barriers or even situations, if any, have you had to overcome as a woman working in sales? Uh, and I, 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 I give that to Molly first. Yeah, I think it's a difficult question for me to answer because I've, been directly working under a woman uh, yeah. but in terms of prospects um i've definitely been on the phone maybe in my first maybe my first three weeks of working and um i had this this man who was he was a sales director of somewhere and the questions he was asking me like i was not capable of answering those questions and i'd openly said i was like god oh, do you mind if i record this call because um for my own personal development he was very aware that I was very new mm -hmm. and he was just asking me all these questions and just like no thanks put the phone down I thought oh come on like I just I give me a break but I, I assume that's not just women that's not a prejudice kind of thing I think that's just the older generation with people in sales now mm -hmm. um but yeah I've, I can't say I've ever experienced it directly which okay. is a, I suppose a positive that's good yeah yeah, and Laura. Um, I, I mean, I'm I am kind of the same in that I think I, my first sales job was Durham Lane, and and I was really really lucky in that it I, I never felt like I shouldn't be there or people were looking at me differently because I was a girl. Even though when I started there was maybe like three other girls and there was like forty boys, um, but I think just just that in yourself, if you're not strong enough to to know that you should be there and that you're, you're going to work just as hard. And just cause you're a girl, you, you shouldn't be seen any differently. If you didn't have that mindset, I think it could be quite hard going into an office with so many men and maybe feeling like you, you don't fit in or, or you struggle to, I don't know, make friends quickly, that, that kind of thing. 
um, I think could mm -hmm. could be an issue. And I and I also have seen, I'm I would like to think I'm quite a strong woman, um, and I I like I speak my mind and I say what I think like quite loudly and openly. But I think if someone I've I've have seen it in in women that I've worked with or girls that I've worked with who haven't been like that and they do kind of get stamped on a little bit stamped on a little bit and, and maybe not heard mm -hmm. um, and I think that that can be an issue with with such a, a male dominated workplace do you think it's a do you think it's a, a case of you know communication that sometimes within the workplace uh, males try to communicate with females um, in the same way that they might communicate with males and don't really understand the difference yeah I, yeah. I remember when I first sorry Molly I remember when I first started um, and th some of the lads on my team said like uh, just just so you know like we've got a bit of a I don't know like a rude like we we, we swear a lot and we we talk about like I don't know <laughs> like rude things I don't know <laughs> I don't know what example to give and just said like I hope that doesn't offend you um, and like it doesn't offend me but I don't know whether they just they, and then they and the, like they think that maybe girls would be offended or maybe some girls would be offended and then that's that that's an issue in itself um, yeah. so yeah I, I know what you mean yeah it, should they be saying that if it's going to if it's going to offend some women I'm not sure that that works does it yeah but yeah, it, exactly. that, I, that almost sounded as well like they were just um, you know showing Laura the, the, the rules uh, we, we say things that are offensive I hope you don't get offended by the way yeah it's it, but it's it's pack it's pack mentality. At the same time, I'm talking about these men who beat their chests and compete with each other all day. The same thing is they form these little groups, and no matter how old you are, right? If you're together within a group of males, trust me, it's changing room mentality. I've been part of it for years playing rugby. You just become this being uh, that you never even thought you would. All of a sudden, you might be you know you're swinging from a light, and you're just like ah, and, and it it gets that way sometimes. I think if you're under pressure, if you can create an environment, then fantastic. But as soon as that environment comes misogynist, offensive, yeah, and loud and overbearing, that's where I think uh, a lot of the time there's that precon you know, the misconception that is it the right, is it the right place when 100% it is, right? Based on ability, it is 100% the right place to be for women. Um, yeah. And now that particular sales director as well that you were speaking to, Molly, um, what type of questions were, 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 was he firing at? Was he just being straight talking or do you, I mean, do you know it was it was a question and it was a word that I couldn't even tell you now like six <laughs> months into my job it was that complicated yeah and I thought like, it, 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 <laughs> you know, I could not speak it was horrifying like any anyone that didn't have the um the strength in themselves and the belief in themselves would have quit that day yeah and I just I came off the call and I thought oh god I'm never calling anyone again yeah I mean, we, we've, we've all had those days. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, I just thought it was a bit tight, really. I thought, mm. yeah. <laughs> you're, you're in sales. You know how it goes. Like, give me a break. Um, but, yeah. I, I, for me as well, I, I, the more and more that I work with organizations, the more and more I'm realizing as well that um, there are a lot more um, female sales directors these days. So I've, wor I've, I've worked with a lot of women in lots of different businesses, in particular at a company called Selenity, uh, with a lady called Deborah Sonby, who's, who's basically, she's one, of, she's one of the better sales directors I've ever worked with, to be honest. In terms of creating um, a culture, um, and I think the representation was about 50-50, straight down the middle. So it wasn't a case that there was, there, was more, there was more men than there was women. It was a definite even split. Um, and I think that was probably a culture created by herself as a woman in terms of, you know, working her way up and being able to do that, but also offering people the opportunity as well to be able to, um, to you know, to make a career in sales. Um, and I just noticed it more and more. And for me, I think, I mean, do, do you think females or, or women are better, they're better leaders? Oh, <laughs> I mean, Sometimes, yeah, I, I do think so. And I, and I think that they, like I was saying earlier, they just, they just sometimes have a, a different way of thinking, um, which, which is, is really refreshing and, and, and good to see. Back when, on your point before, though, about how you said that she's kind of created a 50-50 split, the, the issue I think we have at Durham Lane is that not many females apply for the job. And yeah. I don't know whether that's because um, of, of the way that the, 
I don't know, the, the job specs written out and, and that it's kind of really like a sales, a salesy job spec. And maybe if, if there was a woman um, or, or more women who were leading and in charge at Durham Lane, that, that potentially we would attract more females. I'm not, I'm not really sure, but, um, but yeah, I think that's, that's the issue we've always had is that people just don't apply for the job. Well, uh, so we don't know whether they're going to be any good because there's just not any that, that are trying. Yeah. Yeah, there's, a, there's a good question, actually. Why did you two apply for sales roles? Um, I ca I'd come out of the hospitality industry and, and I'd moved into Manchester and I had I was just applying for jobs and applying for jobs and I just I honestly went into kind of like a um like a recruitment day and not really expecting what to do when all these people had prepared their speeches and why they should be a salesperson and I was just like oh my god. <laughs> I've prepared <laughs> nothing <laughs> so I just kind of stood up and said what I said and and Kate was one of the people one of the recruiters and the reason she hired me was because I am I just naturally did it I was just honest I didn't say oh I'm this top performing person I have done I've made this much quota in the last quarter like all of this stuff I didn't say any of that um it, it was just really humane and then it clicked to me that that's what she's like that's the job that I would be doing so um yeah just literally fell into it yeah and it, you know, listen that's that's the say that that's the thing that we say about every single salesperson right other than uh my one of my bosses who knew he was going to be a salesperson from the get-go right <laughs> most people I mean if you speak to one of my other bosses he, he was meant to be a rock star right um <laughs> Uh, our, our, our current, um, <laughs> our, our current, yeah, but our current chief commercial officer as well, um, Jake. He did a degree in fine art. Uh, I was supposed to be a personal trainer and totally failed at it, and found myself in sales. Right? It, it's it's just one of those things that you fall into. But just going back to your point again, I mean, you know, why is it that you applied for a sales role in the first place, Laura? Um, I. It was my first job as well, this, this sales role that I'm in now. And, and I was working in retail and I, it, I was just bored more than anything. I was really, really bored. I, again, have a degree that's completely not related at all. <laughs> um, and I just wanted something that, that was actually going to challenge me and where I thought there might be progression. And again, it, it wasn't necessarily I was like, right, sales is the job for me. But I was applying for jobs similar to Molly and I, I came across Durham Lane and, and when I had my interview, it just seemed like the, the, the job, it, yes, it's challenging, but it's so rewarding. And there is, there's, there's just so much that you can do. Like it's, it's not just picking up the phone and, and making a hundred calls a day. Like that's not sales. It's, it's thoughtful. It's creative. It's consultative. And, and I, that's what I wanted. Something where I could really, really think about what I was doing and, um, and something that would challenge me. Yeah. And you know, it, it risk of me sounding a little bit like an interview here as well. Um, why is it? Why is it that the two of you, you know, love sales and want to stay in it? It's a good balance. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, um, keep doing that. It's it's just a good balance. It's a good balance of kind of nurturing your prospects or your clients or whatever you want to call them, and then it's putting yourself out there and making something your own as well, like everyone has their own dynamic of the way they call everyone has their own way to learn new things like there's so many resources out there for you to learn from other people and do well and still do be able to do it in your own way and i absolutely love that okay brilliant um, yeah laura um yeah it's similar as well it's, it's just it it is fun um every day is different um, you, you just speaking to so many different people and um, getting to know people that's that's one of the things like she was saying about kind of nurturing you really get to build relationships and, and get to know people and understand them and find the best way of working with them and for them um, and and just the fact that that no two days are the same um, it's yeah it doesn't it doesn't get boring <laughs> yeah yeah you're also helping people as well it's not yeah yeah you're not like selling someone something that they're never going to use like you are helping someone's business well yeah. certainly i am yeah so would yeah. you say that you guys are a little bit more focused on you know the team environment collaborative working environment but ultimately serving customers as opposed to actually smashing targets yeah definitely i think that's that's got to be the most important thing i know that's something we really drive at durham lane is um is 
is building those relationships and getting the client to be so happy with the work that you've done that they renew and, and they feel like we, we are part of their team. We, we're not just, they haven't just hired a few sales execs, they've hired um, an extension of their company to, to help them and work with them. Um, so that, that's got, that has to be the way that you work, otherwise it just, it just won't work. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that that doesn't mean that, you know, women can't crush their targets because I'm pretty sure they can <laughs> and, 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 and absolutely do, to be honest, um, and often have higher rates than men, according to that same Gartner report, right? So, the, you know, the results don't lie, okay? The statistics don't lie either. But I just think the idea of being a target crusher, right, sounds just a little bit negative, as if it's the only thing that matters in sales is hitting your number no matter the cost, because um, it's absolutely not that way. Um, now, you know, you guys are, you know, Molly, you've been uh, within this business for five to six months now? Yeah, five and a half months. Five and a half months. Uh, and Laura, you're just coming shy of two years now as well? Two years in October, yeah. Okay. Um, so if you were going to um, give one piece of advice, right, that you would give to another woman, uh, another woman, sorry, um, <laughs> who is hoping to develop or even advance her career in sales, what, w- what would it be? Who? Me. She yeah, <laughs> Um, I would say, I think set, set your stall out very, very quickly. I think, especially if you're, if you're a woman going into a, a, a male dominated office um, or workplace to don't kind of come in, come in quietly. Um, I think really kind of let them know that you're there and let them know that, that you're going to, well, not necessarily that you have to prove yourself, but just let them know who you are and what your, what your kind of aims are and how, how you, you're going to work hard and you're going to be just as good as, as the men. Um, and, and yeah, really just, just, just let them know that, that you, you shouldn't be, you should be taken seriously. Okay. Brilliant. Yeah. I'd say that again, like going back to that kind of gap, branding yourself well and like strong and being a woman and all of this stuff is only going to do you favors. Um, in terms of getting your prospects and getting seen, really, um, definitely going in strong on all accounts. Going in strong, <laughs> mm. I like, I like it. No, I do. And you know what? But I, is there is there then uh, and also another misconception that if a woman comes in and is strong and is you know all of a sudden they're a, they're a monster, they're cutthroat. Good for them. Go for <laughs> <laughs> I feel like in in our office, Luke, that's seen as such a great thing I think Jake especially who you mentioned earlier he um when he does interviews with with um girls he he absolutely loves the ones who are, aren't afraid to to really shout about themselves and and be that strong woman um, and and not kind of be quiet and and shy um, so I think that's something that that especially in our company we really we really appreciate and look for yeah, definitely. Like having that competitive nature it doesn't have to make you a monster. Like yeah. you can be as competitive as anyone in that office, whether they're male or female. Um, it definitely is an essential thing to have. I mean, the the way that the world is going right now, in terms of the things that are changing, um, you know, with 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 all the recent events that have gone on, uh, I think you know the world is changing anywhere in terms of an opinion and a view on things. Um, and you know, jobs will cross over the more traditional female jobs will become the more traditional male jobs. I'm pretty sure we'll get to a point where everything is just the same. And it's not just that small representation, if not a third of um, the actual uh, sales market is made up of, of females, but it will be a, it will be a lot more. Um, I just, you know, it was even, even, even down to some of the wording in some of these questions, right? I was, I was speaking to some of my colleagues and I was panicking saying, do I say female or do I say woman? And it, I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't work out which one was more condescending? Neither of them are, but it was because of my own head that I was thinking, well, I can't do that. And that's why every single question that I've asked has been double barreled when I've gone female, w- woman, w- women, w- I just, <laughs> it's, it's a panic to get it out and it absolutely shouldn't be. Um, there should be harmonious teams working together, right? We always say that, you know, it shouldn't be a quota, it should be the best person for the job. Mm, 100%. Um, and, you know, the recruitment world, I think, was probably uh, one step ahead of the sales world in terms of female representation. I noticed that more and more when I was going in and delivering sales training for lots of recruitment firms. Um, you would have a lot more female representation within the office. Um, and particularly in senior, senior roles for one particular business, um, there was two women overseeing the whole department. 
right? Uh, and my goodness, it was successful, right? They were absolutely brilliant. And you know what the best thing about that was? Is they totally led by example. It wasn't just a case of, right, okay, I'm going to order people around. I'm going to show you just what I can actually do. That headset was never off. She was stood up making calls, the loudest person in the office. And if you looked on the board, her target was way, way past, right? She was way, way past that target, leading from the front. And I thought, what a brilliant example to set, no matter who you are. Mm, definitely. And hopefully, hopefully sales can, can go in that same direction. For sure. Um, so if we put all of these factors into perspective, the benefit's probably clear, right? More women in sales is good for business. Would you agree? Yes. <laughs> more, more balance. More yes. balance, yeah. More, more balance, yeah. Um, a fairer representation as well. But I think the question that will, you know, companies will have to go is how do we find that better balance? How do we, how do we better balance the scales? How do we, how do we attract more women to, to sales roles? So, you know, we've discussed messaging, whether that needs to change in terms of the, what sales actually looks like. Uh, because, I, you know, I go into every single sales session that I ever do, right? And I'll go into a room and a lot of the time I work with business owners, non-sales people, engineers, project managers, people who typically, if you put sales in their title, would absolutely run a mile, right? And I always say to people, when I say the word salesperson, what's the first word that comes to mind, right? And it is never positive, <laughs> right? It is never positive, but things come out like the things that I've mentioned, they go uh, double glazing salesman, yeah, car salesman, salesman, man, man, right? And it's just that preconception that people have. And I, I do hope uh, that it changes. Um, I, re I really, really do because, um, you know, working with the women that I have in the past um, and particularly uh, within the training side of my, um, of my career, I got more advice and direction from uh, a woman within my career than I ever have given or ever have been given uh, over the 13 year career that I've had in, within sales. So that for me says an awful lot. So basically the sales profession needs more women, right? Um, mm -hmm. But we, I think they probably need to start taking a closer look at the changes happening, maybe to help drive future, you know, to, to, to drive sales in the future, look at the different roles that are available. It, it's not just, smashing the telephone. Um, so for you guys, if you've got a, a bit of a closing statement, and I know I'm putting you on the spot here, <laughs> just, in, just in terms of what you would like to see in the future, um, and I'll go with Molly first, just so you don't uh, talk over each other. <laughs> um, yeah, so what would you like to see in the future? I mean, you talked about balance, but just if there's, if there's one thing that you'd like to see. I think being being the change that you want to see I definitely think that women need to again brand themselves put themselves out there you know compete with the best people and just make a change if and that sounds really cheesy god um, <laughs> no no but, I love that I love that yeah, right? that, just, that, used, that used to be my slogan as a personal trainer right it was be the you that you want to be right yeah. so be, be the change that you want to see uh, that you want to see right Mm, definitely like, there's definitely room for it and now is the time so put yourself out there as much as you can yeah and I know like that you mentioned doing things like this yeah, yeah and I, know, I know that you mentioned your, your boss your boss Kate a few times as well I, I suppose is she the she's the, she's the leading example right now for yourself oh yeah definitely don't tell her that but yeah <laughs> she definitely she definitely is um, she's great yeah, yeah. brilliant uh, and Laura um, I, I would really love in the future for people to to really understand what sales is and what our jobs actually entail and for 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 it to be just an obvious choice for a woman to do as well as a man um and and again it's the same things the, the same things will come up and that we just need to talk about more of these kind of things and be more kind of active and, and loud on linkedin just to to really get that message across brilliant well hopefully we've made a little bit of ground because I'm a little bit like yourself, Molly. I, I went looking. I went looking, and you know what? There, there really hasn't much of this been discussed, right? And uh, so I feel I feel like a trailblazer. Um, <laughs> but you no, know, I, I, it's you know, as I said going into this, I was very apprehensive. Um, when Laura will probably tell you, I don't really get nervous going into things, right? I just sort of fly, <laughs> fly in and do my thing, right? Uh, but I've probably put more thought into this one than I ever have before. So hopefully, it's been a um, a sensitive approach into it, but a common sense approach at the same time. Um, it's yeah, not yeah. difficult to answer any of those questions, uh, but thanks a lot for your time. Um, this will be going live in probably a couple of days.
So look out, look out for it on Friday coming, right? Uh, but please do tune in for some more. Uh, we'll be back next week with some brand new guests. Thank you very much.